Okay, so I'm uh, still setting up here. We're gonna keep the video here going. Uh, I'm just getting everything up. Um, Tofu Mom, I'm actually, yeah, I'm not feeling fantastic. Uh, sinuses mainly, and like a little bit of a sore throat. Uh, but overall, not bad. So I think I might drink some hot tea and, and keep going. <clears throat> I just didn't want to delay doing this. I've been waiting to do these molds. Be back in a second. Everybody. Okay, so we are all set up here. I got my uh, hot tea, and hopefully that'll help out a bit. I saw so my throat so might sound, my voice might sound a little broken or whatever. My sinuses are really stuffed up and not feeling a hundred percent. But I really want to uh, get going on this this stream here. So, oh yeah. Okay. So what are we doing today? Well, I'm going to do some resin casting with my new molds. And these are the ones that, um, these aren't the one, this isn't the one that I worked on the last stream. This is the, uh, this is the mold that I made, um, off camera, um, kind of like on my own. So I made the first half on a stream a couple weeks ago. Um, you guys might remember that one. So when we used the carpet tape to uh, hold the keys down. So I made that one. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to do a couple other things with it, so I ended up doing the ha other half of it on another stream, and then uh, the one that I made the other day, it still needs to cure a little more, but this has been curing for like four days, so I think we're good, we can we can do casting on it. Because you gotta let them cure, kind of just let them sit and uh, leach out the alcohols and chemicals they use to make the si silicone plastic in their, uh, liquid. So that's all worked out now, hopefully. Now we can actually make some resin. So I've been thinking about colors. Um, we're gonna do two different ones. We're gonna do both of these. But I've been thinking about colors and trying to decide what colors we want to use. Um, I got a lot of really great um, reviews of my um, neon pink and purple ones. So I was thinking neon pink and purple might be cool. What do y'all think? What colors should I do? Got quite a few colors to choose from. Um, I know if Disco Frog is on here, he's gonna tell me to do green. <laughs> Cause that's like his thing. Who do we got on on stream today? 
Who's on here? We got, it says we got four people watching. Who's on? It won't tell me, so. Looks like we got wolves on Wall Street. Tofu Mom, I know. David McMillan, welcome to the stream. I think this is the first time I've seen you on here. Thank you for joining. Uh, so neon green, huh? So I do have green. I haven't done any neon green, but I do believe I have a neon green in my set of colors. Uh, yeah, I'll think about what colors I want to do. Um, wolves is cool. <laughs> yes, I like calling you wolves. Um, I am streaming this to a couple different platforms, so I have to kind of call people out when I say where I'm coming, where I'm seeing them from. So, um, but yeah, so uh, wolves, I'm, I will just call you wolves from now on. Be easy. Okay, so we got a couple different things we're gonna work on here. A couple different colors we can use. So these are the two neon ones that I have. Uh, so this is neon yellow. And this is my neon green. It doesn't look neon green in this camera, but you can trust me, it's super bright green. Um, and so I can do two, I can do two different colors. That'd be easy. Uh, maybe even mix them a little bit. This is turning yellow. It should be a very pale, very, very pale yellow, but you can see it's, this is definitely um, a sign that this resin is getting old and I need to use it soon at a scale, but that's fine because we got a scale. Um, I have a 100 gram scale right here that we can use to do this. So it should be fine. Um, 100 gram scale, that should be plenty. Let me just double check. Yes, Loki, I hear you. My cat, he's so tortured. Yeah, it's only 13 grams for this cup, so we'll be fine. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're going to do um, a bunch of a bunch of keycaps. Now we've got 12, 14 regular keycaps, and then two two unit keycaps. Um, can I do black swirls? Wolves ask, can I do black swirls in the neon yellow? Uh, maybe. It's kind of hard to do the swirls with colors like black and yellow, just because um, it will it will want to mix. It'll want to like dis distribute itself amongst it. Um, but I can do it. Um, I do have black. I do have a regular black. And this, this is like opaque black. So I've got this one, which is opaque. And then I've got this one, which is more of a translucent black. Um, it sounds weird, translucent black, but believe me, this is translucent. You can actually, some light does get through it. And then this one is definitely like, this is very opaque. This is like, you can't see through it at all. Um, so we could do that. Um, that would require kind of doing a few things. I'd have to make, I'd have to make three batches of resin. Um, let me think that through. Because I don't have a ton of um, time on these for this resin. I think I only have ten minutes to use the resin. So let me let me think. Because we have to mix the colors in before we do a few things. David McMillan here asking, so what are the colors of sort of powder pigment and a mix with the resin? Um, it is, it's a, it is a powder pigment, um, but it's micro powdered, I guess, is one way of explaining it. Um, it's like plastic. It's like a plastic suspended in a resin material and like a, a suspension material. So, Tell you what, we'll we'll do the black one at another time. We'll just do green and yellow for this one. How's that? We'll do the black on another on another stream, and we'll do that by itself. So it'll be like a neon yellow and black. We won't try messing with the green. I just really want to try the green out um, because I haven't used this neon green. So first things first, safety first, guys. Wear your safety goggles. That is key. Also, drink some tea. Safety goggles, and then we're gonna do, uh, we gotta mix the resin, or mix this um, coloring stuff up. So we're gonna do that too. We also need our gloves. So let's get some gloves out. 
I've already got my stack of paper towels here. Uh, and I need to put some music on, so let's, let's get some music going here. And as usual, I'm listening to, uh, this is, um, their name is Celerect slash LA Dreams. They're a, um, it's a really cool synthwave artist. My intro video that was on the beginning of the stream today uh, featured her music. Um, and I'm going to be doing that intro video kind of like from now on. And then one of these days, um, I will probably do a stream to show you how I made my intro video. So if you have the software, you can try doing it yourself. Um, and then maybe I'll just make a new intro video because I want to have like two or three of them um, that I can choose from. So it's not the same video each time. And I can try a couple different aesthetics. Okay, so mixing time. So this is brand new dye, so I have to mix it before I use it. Oh, and I need paper to put down. I'm trying to find some good garbage paper that I'm not going to miss. paper from this drawing paper is like 16 years old believe it or not I've been had been carrying it between houses across the various states for 16 years I think it's time to go ahead and just use it how's everybody's night night going I hope everybody's having a good evening and maybe this stream will make your night go even better Okay, now that we're starting to mess the dye, I'm going to put the other glove on. So this stuff is pretty strong. Um, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm wearing gloves, even though it's not resin or anything. It's just that the dye is really uh, potent. And so the problem is that just a little bit of this dye will like dye your thumb or your hand like bright green or whatever. Um, and it's really annoying to have that on there. So. What we're doing is we're just going to mix this up because it's been in a storehouse for who knows how long and it's gotten separated. So you got to get in there, just a toothpick, or we're going to use a, this time we're going to use a little tongue depressor popsicle stick. We're just going to get in there and mix it up. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to bring the camera a little bit closer so you can kind of see what I'm working on here. But so you can see it's just like it's kind of thick. Focusing, but it's kind of thick, so we're just gonna we just kind of go in here and just stir it up. You can see it's like it's kind of chunky. It should be very runny when it's properly mixed. And this is just a sample pack of these colors because um, you don't really need very much to color things. So this will last me a little while, but um, eventually, if I have a set of colors that I really like, I'll buy a full size kit and make a bunch of caps with it. Um, but this this little bit here, this will last me probably a couple months. And then what I need to, I'll buy the ones that I actually really like. I really liked the pink. The magenta was pretty awesome, so I was a big fan of that. Okay. There we go. And now... I'm just gonna go ahead and snap this toothpick or this in half and use the other half to stir the other one. It's funny these popsicle sticks are super cheap, but I don't like wasting materials. I'm I'm a uh, kind of cheap like that, I guess. No point in wasting an entire thing when I don't really need to. Same thing with paper towels. I'll just tear them into pieces. Actually, I should do that now as part of my prep because I end up using pieces more than anything because I don't need a full paper towel to clean something. And so I just use little strips of them. Makes them last longer. Okay, let's cut this lid off. I 
This music's a little loud, so I'm gonna turn this down just a touch. That's better. Instead of being cheap, I'm being ethical, thanks. Yeah, it's just kind of like a, I don't know. I was raised that way. It's just like, don't waste stuff. In the same way with like my water bill and stuff, I'm just, I don't use a lot of water. I try to conserve water as much as possible. And I don't know, just kind of like that. It bothers me to, to know that I'm using more water than I need to or whatever. Oh, this neon yellow is bright yellow. Holy cow. Yeah, that's like, the camera really doesn't do it justice. This is like super bright neon yellow. Almost comical. Loki is going nuts out there. All right, I actually, I got, he's, he's annoying me. I'll be right back. He knows what's gonna happen. Now if I even walk towards the door, he takes off running. He hates the squirt bottle. It's good. And I'm still, you know, getting through the... Once I get done with this next batch or two of like keycaps and molds and stuff, I am still planning on doing my little video series, it'll be like three videos on how to do resin casting from beginning to end. And it'll just be like a tutorial. So you won't have to watch like four hours of me farting around. It'll be very quick. I'll explain everything. I made one a while ago, but the lighting was terrible and the sound was not great. But now I've got way more lights. Um, everything looks better. And I got a better microphone. So um, I'll do a tutorial on that very soon. I'm thinking in a couple of weeks. I just want to get like to the point where I'm confident what I'm doing is the right way of doing it and I'm not going to set anyone um, going the wrong way or doing something the wrong way so they don't get frustrated when that doesn't work for them because that's annoying. Okay, well we have our, our dyes are pre-mixed. We got our um, toothpicks to start adding color to the dyes. I'm going to get a couple more here. We got our mixing cup. Um, and then I use these little, I use these little containers here for when I'm messing with my resin and stuff. So we're gonna use that as well. And we're gonna need a lot. I'm thinking we're gonna need, we can always make more than we need because I can always use it in something else. We're also gonna need a syringe. And I buy these, these are medical syringes. So I use these medical grade syringes just because they are um, really easy to get and they work very well. And they're like basically perfect size for what I'm doing. And that's how I inject the resin into the mold. Um, all right, well, let's get started on this then. Too bad Disco Frog is probably asleep. He's gonna miss out on this. He loves green. Gotta get some more tea here. Hello, oh, man. My sinuses are really bugging me. Like I was completely stuffed up there for a little bit. Looks like I got two viewers on Twitch. That's pretty cool. Welcome guys, feel free to chat. Okay, um, I'm thinking we're probably gonna need, I think we're gonna go with maybe um, 30 grams each. I think will be plenty of resin for these, for what we're doing tonight. 
Ooh, I did not do a good job of cleaning this container last time. It's got residue all over it. Okay, it should be fine. Okay, so we're gonna do 30 grams each. That should be enough. So what you do is you put it on the scale, hit tear, Measure it out, 30 grams. This is the most resin I've ever used for these. So this is gonna be interesting. You know what, no, we'll go to 35. We'll do 35 grams. It's gonna be a lot of resin, but we have a lot of keycaps to work from. So, almost there. 35. All right, 35 grams of that side. And now 35 grams of this side. Tear, okay. This side's a little heavier. Too much so we're gonna add a little more on this side of this of this piece we just need like one gram more there we go okay now that those are there we start our mixing uh, so David I'm not using two different resins this is a two-part resin so you have to have you have to use the two sides. You have an A side and a B side. Um, and that's pretty much the case with any resin, is there's always an A side and a B side. And when you mix the two, that's when it starts to cure and starts to form a hard plastic. Um, and so you have to keep them separate. So one's an activator and one's the, the catalyst and one's the other half of it, right? So, All right, so we give it a good stir, good mix. And then... We're gonna put it in the vacuum chamber, degas it. And if you're new to my stream, I have a I have a vacuum chamber that's down here that uh, um, just vacuums out all the air in the small chamber and it pulls the gas out of the uh, reactant. So otherwise you'll get little bubbles throughout your entire uh, casting. And I'm sorry the pump is a little loud. Should be only a minute and then we're ready to go. let that sit for about 30 seconds. Tefram34 on Twitch. How's it going, man? More streaming. Yeah, I am on a roll. Um, I want to try to do like two streams a week, um, especially on resin casting because I'm doing the castings about twice a week, or that's my goal, two, two times a week on castings. So... All right, so I think the resin is done degassing now, so we're gonna go ahead and repressurize. Get my pressure pot ready.
So I think the next stream that I'll do will probably be um, an art stream, where I'm just gonna probably gonna do some drawing or some painting or something. Um, I tend to do those later in the evening, like this one. I get energy at, at night. I just seem to get energy for artwork late at night, and I, I don't know why, but. Okay, so we got our resin. We're gonna do two different colors, so we wanna mix, we're gonna do two different halves of this. And actually, I might not have made enough resin, believe it or not. I might have made too little. We'll see as how far we can get. Tefram34 on Twitch asks, how much, how long does it take the resin to cure? Um, this particular one takes six, six to eight hours. Um, and you're asking a traditional or digital art. Um, I do um, traditional art, usually. I do painting and illustration. Ink, ink painting, ink illustration, acrylic painting, stuff like that. Okay, we're gonna make the green resin here. You can see already, it's a pretty strong green. Just a little bit that I added to it. It looks pretty good. But I want, I want it to be brighter. I want that to be a much more solid green. So we're gonna add a lot, a lot more. This, this is like very neon. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. And a good thing I haven't sent those keycaps to Disco Frog because I think that he will really appreciate these ones. These look awesome. Be cool if I can make that jade color again. But that jade color was a mix of a light green and a dark green, so. Okay, now the neon yellow. Again. So one of the things about this stuff you have to kind of understand or know about resin casting is um, when you're dealing when you're dealing with these like dyes, the resin dyes, is that there's a there's a very particular proportion you have to be careful about. If you go over that proportion, um, and in this one it's like for these ones it's like one to a hundred, and it's different for every resin, but typically it's about one to a hundred. And if you go over that, it'll have it'll make it so that the resin has a hard time curing. Oh my gosh, this yellow is like super bright neon. It looks freaking awesome. Whoever made the suggestion for uh, for the neon yellow, you are on point. This is really cool. This is gonna be awesome. It's so bright, it looks like Mountain Dew. It looks like Mountain Dew. This is cool. Oh, I'm excited. I am definitely excited for this. Awesome. Okay, we got our, our dyes set. They are ready to go. Yeah, do caps. I mean, and we got the green too, so it's like, it's perfect. Okay, so let's start our pouring process. And I'm gonna do what I usually do here. Um, I'm gonna do a mix of the two resins. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of resin in one side, and then I'm gonna inject the resin on the other half. Um, so let's do, what should be our injection? I'm actually thinking the green should be the injection. Because that bright yellow is like super, super bright and I think it'll look good that way. Baja Blast do it, I know. Well Baja Blast is like a bluish color, which actually I do have a blue keycap that I made recently. Here's a, like a neon blue one. Okay, let's start this pour. Uh, we'll do a couple with just a base green coat, just a solid green. And there's some unmixed coloring in there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stir that up just a little bit. just to give that, get rid of that kind of color. Okay, 
Now, well, it looks weird mixing the two. It might not work that well. Well, we'll find out. And I think I have just enough resin for these molds. I'm not sure if I have enough for another mold, but that is okay. I think these are gonna look really neat. Oh, no, I've got enough. I just have to be a little more conservative with my yellow. And that is okay. I got enough to fill these two molds. These are going to look real neat. At least I hope so. And again, I want to thank you guys for joining the stream. It's always cool to talk with people on the stream, so I'm not just talking to myself. So thank you again. Doing, I'm going to experiment with a couple different weird effects here. they get these air bubbles and it's hard to hard to do the injection okay now we'll put the lid on it all right thanks David thanks for stopping by and have a good night or morning or wherever you are okay this top half of the mold is on making sure it's secured oh these are super bright neon all right and then we just go in with injection so we just kind of poke into these little holes here and if we did it right what should happen is the yep resin should start coming out Sinuses feel terrible. Getting a lot of air bubbles in these guys. I'm kind of a little concerned, but didn't fill them enough when I was doing the first half of the mold, so that's okay. We'll be all right. It should still make for very interesting looking keycaps. All right, so we'll just go ahead and take care of that with these ones. We'll just go ahead and fill them up a little more so I'm not having to press so hard. Okay. 
Yeah, these ones are still a little empty. So we'll go and we'll hit those up again later. Looks kind of gross in a good way. Awesome. I hope it does. I hope they turn out just as gross as they look right now. Because they do look really cool and kind of gross. All right, well, now we'll just do a do the other half here. I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to mix these green and this yellow resin up in this tube, and we'll start doing the other half of the injections. Because some of these turned out pretty empty. Um, definitely didn't fill all the way. And the way it's mixed here, like, it has this really cool, like, that, that neon yellow is, like, super neon. Um, so it looks very much like Mountain Dew. But, like, Mountain Dew under black light. It's, like, the way I would describe it. All right, we are all set ready to go to get to the uh, pressure chamber now. So we'll go ahead and hit that up. I'm just making sure these are all topped off and I have no obvious air bubbles. Looks like we're good though. Okay. We gotta do a little pre-cleaning just to make sure that we are good um, because this resin, do the colors mix or they swirl? Um, they kind of mixed. I thought they were gonna swirl a little bit, but they, they definitely mixed more. Um, it became much more of a like a green yellow than they did swirl. I think it's because they're so translucent. Let's do our pre-clean. So what I do here is I just add some rubbing alcohol, 91% rubbing alcohol to the uh, to the resin in these cups. And what that does is it helps the resin to not um, solidify in those cups because I use them on a regular basis. And I don't want them getting hardened. And so then usually what I do is I fill one up a little bit more with the rubbing alcohol. And then I take the syringe and I fill that with from the overfilled one. And this just helps it dislodge any of that extra resin that might be in there. Okay, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mute the channel just for a second while I run the pressure chamber because it is very loud. And because it's loud, like you always hear me say, safety first, you know, wear earplugs to make sure that we don't have damage to our hearing. Okay, going on mute now.
Yeah, apparently I didn't press the uh, mute button hard enough. Sorry about that, guys. This microphone's mute button is very uh, twitchy. Yeah, I apologize, everybody. That was not great. Okay. Yeah, that was that was terrible. <laughs> I really apologize for that. That was very loud. Um, so hopefully I didn't blow anybody's speakers or make anybody angry or wake up any children. Yeah, this microphone, I should know better. You have to like really click it and it moves when you press it. So you feel like you're pushing it hard, but you're actually just moving the microphone back. Oh well. Uh, none of my friends has the same microphone and said it was same kind of thing. He has problems with it, but oh well. Maybe I'll do it in the software next time. It's much easier. And then I can see it. Okay. Gloves back on. I did make one mistake. I made one mistake while we were doing this. I picked up the molds with no gloves. And so I ended up getting resin on my hands and I had to kind of like work around it. But the pressure chamber is pressurized, which means in six hours we'll be able to pull out some new keycaps. So I'm probably gonna do that tomorrow morning. Um, and then what I'll do, uh, maybe I'll put my uh, Twitch or my Twitter page here in chat. Um, and you can check out my, my Twitter page because then you'll see I'll post the uh, pictures of the keycaps tomorrow morning. Man, I must be sick. Look at that. I took my eye protection off. What am I doing? Gosh. Guys, you know, I'm all about safety first. Here I made two mistakes. I must be feeling ill. Okay. So now we're just going through, and all we're doing is just cleaning up. So I'm mixing that, getting that resin out of there. And that alcohol inhibits the curing process. So, and it dissolves the resin. So, dissolving it now. And I can't even, I can't even tell you guys, the mix of that yellow and that green, it looks fantastic. This is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be a highlight keycap set for sure. I think, I think you guys are really gonna like the way it looks when it comes out. The camera, the, this camera can't do it any justice. When I post the pictures tomorrow, um, keep an eye out for them. And I'll type my, uh, I'll put my uh, Twitch, or my Twitter, I keep saying Twitch. I will put my Twitter link in there so you can follow my Twitter. Um, when you follow my Twitter, you'll see me make all kinds of weird, you know, comments about various things. But one of the other things I do is I often post pictures to it. Um, I have an Instagram, but uh, I have an Instagram, but the problem I've been having with Instagram is that I have a personal Instagram with my family on it, and they, you know, tag me in family photos and stuff. And it's kind of not something I want to do, so. Um, Wolves asking... Will I populate a board with keycaps like that? Um, I would. Yeah, I totally would. Um, I have to make a full board worth of keycaps, though. These these keycaps are all uh, SA row three, so a flat profile, SA flat profile, um, which is definitely one of the types of things that I like, so I definitely will be able to put this on a board, and I probably will. Um, I just need, on my Prionics, I need a, quite a few. I don't know if I would do a whole board. I don't type on blanks. Um, not because I don't like them, but because even though I type a lot, I do a lot of typing, a lot of code, a lot of programming, I do not know, I type, touch type, but when it comes to like knowing where the programming symbols are, I keep forgetting and I always have to look down. 
There's nothing wrong with that. In this cup here, um, this is where I mixed the resin in initially. What am I doing down here? This is the one I mixed the resin in initially here. And it's like really, like you can kind of see the resin has already gotten gummy. So this one is just, I'm just gonna toss it. Those cups are super cheap. So this guy, well now I got resin all over my hand. But, um, so there's that. And then I like to reuse these um, syringes just because they, I mean, you can definitely get more than one use out of them, so why not? Um, they're pretty cheap. Um, I like getting the medical grade ones because I've gotten some before that weren't medical grade. And the problem I had with the non-medical grade ones was that um, the plunger, the plastic, the, the rubber part on the plunger here, it degrades. And so you use it once and that's it. And they weren't that much cheaper. Um, they were like, I think this was like a pack of 10, or no, a pack of 20 for $10 each. Or sorry, for $10, not $10 each. A pack of 20 for $10, so 50 cents each. And the cheap ones were like 35 cents and you can only use them once. So why not just reuse them? I'm already using the alcohol for it anyway to clean these, so well but this was actually a pretty easy cleanup this time around have to do a lot more cleaning. Well, hopefully I didn't lose anyone with my noise. That was really embarrassing. That was a lot of noise. I'm actually surprised you guys stuck around after that. That was super loud. I mean, I wear earplugs when I do it because of the fact that it's so loud. And that's why I don't do streams at night, usually, is because it's, it's pretty loud. So what I'm doing here, I just stick like a piece of paper towel in there and just clean it out. It helps get any of the, the remainder of the resin out of there. So you're not dealing with any half cured resin sitting in there. And I will re reiterate here real quick. Just real quick, I'll reiterate. This is, you wanna use, you wanna use 91% isopropyl alcohol. And the reason why we're using 91% isopropyl alcohol is because um, the lower alcohol concentrations, um, those ones don't dissolve the resin as nicely and you end up using more of it anyway. Um, so it, you might as well just get like a stronger one and it's much, much better at cutting the resin, um, especially if it gets on your hands or something. Um, you can just use that real quick. But um, I'll tell you what, tell you what I'll do. I'll go through my materials real quick. We'll just do it while we're sitting here. So I can show you exactly the materials I use and how much I paid for them. So you can get a better understanding of how much it costs to do uh, a set. I think this has resin on the outside of it. So I just touched it and it feels sticky. And like half cured resin gets very sticky. It doesn't like stick, it just gets sticky. Not bad, but like, like, um, it gets sticky like half dried honey. That's the kind of the way I would describe it. Like, like dried honey. So not like adhesive sticky, but just annoyingly sticky. So you just clean it off with some alcohol and you're all set. All right, so now Uh, yeah, see the resin kind of still, even though I use this protective paper, it's still, you can kind of see here, maybe, it still leaks through the paper and it gets on the desk. Um, so paper definitely helps, but it's not perfect. 
And I just built this desk, so that's why I'm like, kind of protective about it. Like I literally just built this like two weeks ago. From scratch, by hand, bought all the wood, cut it to size, put it together. I tend to be a pretty handy person. A handy person to have around. That's what my roommates told me. Cause I can, I can pretty much fix anything. Okay. There we go. Okay, so materials. Let's go over those. Let me get this camera set up here so you can see better what I'm looking at. Okay, first thing you wanna talk about when you're talking about materials. Um, I do usually just, let's go over tools. We'll do tools first. Important tools to have for resin casting. Basic ones, uh, one of the things I like to use, I get these um, pre-measured mixing cups. And so you can see here, actually I'll show you, we'll go up in the camera. You can see that these all have their uh, like material amounts, like the um, these are numbered here. The camera decided to not focus on it anymore. Um, and it gives you the mixing amounts. So one to one, if you're doing one to one volume for things like silicone, the silicone I use is one to one volume. And so you can use these to help you guide that. So the silicone I'll take up to the one and then you pour the rest of it up to the next one on the right hand side. So you're one to one. And that's, that's what I use for the volume ones. Um, this particular resin is a volume is by weight, but the other resin that I use, which is uh, as smooth on smooth cast 327, that's this one. That's this resin here. This is a volume. This is volume um, measured. So you would only need you need one to one on this, and that's why these are as indispensable. Otherwise, if you do it by weight, you're going to want a gram scale. This one's a tiny gram scale. This is a medical scale. Um, you know, you can, I guess you can also weigh weed on it, but whatever. Um, so this is, uh, it's, it's more for medical stuff though. And so this one is, uh, I think this one's maximum weight is 100 grams, which is about the most I normally use for this weighing. Um, you can get better ones. This one's pretty accurate, but you can get way better ones. This one was like, this scale was like $5. So you can't, can't beat that. This was $5. I got a hundred of these mixed cap, these mixing cups for 20 bucks. So you can just toss them out if you need to. I try to reuse them as much as possible. Um, so that's, those are two tools I have. I use these syringes, medical grade syringes. Um, and these were $20 or 20 syringes for $10, so 50 cents a piece. Um, what else? The resin itself, which you can buy in small amounts. Now I buy it in pretty large volumes because I use it pretty often. So when you buy this one, which is a really good, this, this is a really good resin, Smoothcast 327. Um, this was a gallon is about $120 US dollars. And that's a lot, 120 bucks, obviously that's expensive, but it's a gallon of resin. Like I've done multiple castings with this resin already and I still have three quarters of the gallon left. So there's tons. For making my molds, um, I've had two different types of, of silicone that I've used. Now previously I was using this Umu stuff. And this is Umu 30. Oh, and that Smoothcast 327, um, that one has a long cure time, or not a long cure time, but a long um, pot life, so you have more time to mix it and, and do colors and stuff. Uh, its pot time is about 15 minutes. Um, this water clear, this is Alumalite water clear, that's what we use today. Um, this is a lighter resin, it's very, it's very lightweight, but very hard, it's, it's kind of brittle though. But this resin um, has like a 12 minute pot time. So 12 minutes to work with it before it starts turning into gum. And then it turns into plastic. Um, so I used this Umu before. This is a um, tin cure silicone. 
Uh, this one got old. I was I was an idiot. I let it sit for too long. I was depressed. A bunch of other stuff happened. Life life happens. And I didn't do any casting or mold making for a long time. And then I came back into it. And all of these things, resin, silicone, all of it, it has an, an age. And if it goes over a certain age, it doesn't work anymore. And this is not really working anymore. It's It produces terrible quality results because it's, it's a year old. So, I mean, it's my fault. I can't blame them. But it's for learning it, this is really good. It's very cheap. I think for a gallon of uh, the silicone was, a gallon of silicone, I think this was $80. So that's not bad. That's actually pretty affordable for a gallon. And a gallon's way more than a, a beginner would need. But the one I'm using now, that I, you saw me using today, this is what I've been using today. This is Mold Star 30. So Mold Star 30 means that this has a 30 minute pot life, roughly. Um, it actually ends up being, um, I think closer to 45 minutes. And this is a platinum cure. So you'll see it says platinum silicone right here. Um, and the platinum silicone means that um, it has, they use platinum as one of the, the agents in it. And it, it, this is much stronger uh, silicone. Um, this one has like twice the strength of Umu, um, and it's it's more viscous. Um, it has a much stronger um, stretch ability. It's a much harder resin or a harder silicone, so it doesn't take damage that well, which is great because um, when you're pulling the keycaps and out and in and out of these things and reusing them, you end you inevitably end up damaging the mold a little bit each time. And this this particular silicone can handle that way better. The problem is, it is about twice as expensive. This gallon here, these a gallon of this um, this silicone, I think was one one sixty. So it, it's it is on the pricey side, but you can use it more often. So you kind of how much work, how much time is it worth, right? If I have to remake my silicone molds all the time, I'm wasting a day or two days worth of casting time because I'm waiting for my silicone molds to recure, and I shouldn't have to do that. I should be able to use them like five or six times and have no problems. And then after that, I start thinking about making new molds again. Um, that's me though. You can probably use them more often than that, but I use them five or six, Umu I used five or six times and then that was their toast. So I'm hoping these I can get maybe 12 to 20 castings out of, that'd be nice. What else is essential? Cause those are, those you have to have. Um, other things that it's good to have around, Q-tips, um, just like paper, the paper kind, don't use the plastic kind, use the paper kind. That's the paper stem Q-tip. We use those for making sprues. And sprues are the little holes where the resin comes out so you can have a little leg and you cut those legs off. Toothpicks, super cheap, obviously. For some reason, surprisingly hard to find at a grocery store. Like I looked all over, I could not find them. Like, how can you not carry toothpicks at a grocery store? And then um, popsicle sticks. I buy these in a pack of 500, and I think 500, um, 500 of these uh, popsicle sticks is like, I think this was like 10 bucks, something like that. Um, and they're indispensable. I mean, you have to use them to stir and stuff. And the fact that they have this, you know, nice wide flat shape really helps stir resin up. And then you can kind of use them as a, as a makeshift spatula. So when you're scraping the resin or the silicone out of something, you got that, like, you can use the edge of it and really just really get in there and scrape. And it's good for mixing because of that too, because silicone likes to stick to the sides of things and you really have to scrape it in there to stir it. Now, if you're doing large amounts of resin or large amounts of silicone, I recommend using much larger containers. And so I have a couple things for that. Solo party cups. Okay, so solo party cups are useful because they're tall. You can get really tall ones and they hold more. And then you can just toss them. They're disposable. Paper would be better, but Problem is that the, the wax in the paper cups will affect the resin. Do not use wax coated paper. Do not. 
Okay. And then paint stirrers, right? You can get these for free at any hardware store. If you're using a lot of silicone or a lot of resin, you're gonna want these to mix it up. So again, these are these are free at almost any paint or hardware store. Um, and you can just grab like five or six of them. Other materials you're gonna want. Um, 91% alcohol, right? So I'm already starting to run low on this. I'm gonna wanna get another one. You're also gonna want nitrile gloves, okay? And nitrile gloves because um, latex gloves actually have an issue with um, silicone. So you don't wanna use latex gloves. You wanna use nitrile or vinyl. I don't like the vinyl ones. They're thicker um, and they tend to tear easier for some reason. These nitrile ones, they, they don't tear as easily and they're thinner, so you can feel things better with your fingers and they come off really easily. The vinyl ones are like a total pain to pull off. Um, and these are cheap. I mean, 100 nitrile gloves for, I think these were like five bucks or seven bucks or something. So you can buy like hundreds of them and it's super cheap. Um, other useful things to have around. Rubber bands. Now, I, get, I go back and forth on this. When you do a silicone mold, different people will say that you should rubber band the silicone molds, and I'll show you what I mean. So I've got the mold together here, like this. Now, they will say you should silicone, you should, or sorry, you should, you should put rubber bands around it, like so. And what that does is it helps to keep the mold tightly closed Right, so it keeps it closed while you're moving it or while you're doing things. And that's true, it does hold it better. But you really gotta use a lot of rubber bands to really make it work it, or make it worth it. So, you know, I gotta go in and I gotta grab, you know, like three or four of these to really make it work. And now it's, now it's tight, right? Now it's on there, it's on there tight. But I haven't really noticed too much of a benefit. Um, I've done it without this and it seems to be fine. And, you know, I watch people like Binge, if you guys know Binge, from um, Hungerworks Studio, he makes keycaps, and he doesn't use rubber bands. So, I don't know. I find it's work, extra work, and that's time that I could be using to get these things in the pressure pot so the resin start doesn't start to cure early and then I'm screwed. So I don't like using them as much, but they are good to have around, because they might want to. Like, if you have a nice, long, thin, uh, like, mold you might want that to keep it because the, the mold will bend and flex as you move it and it could be good to keep it tight but i don't have a lot of those anymore i'm not using those and this this particular silicone is very rigid and so i don't really need to worry about it flexing that much okay another thing you're going to need when you're dealing with silicone you need to have a release agent so this is Man Easy Release 205. This is uh, made by the same company that makes, um, they make uh, the Mold Star, and they make, it's the company Smooth On. They own this as well. Um, uh, Tofu Mom asks, is the synth for sculpting on? Yes, the synth is mainly for sculpting. Um, and you can use it for sculpting and you can use it for um, getting very accurate um, bottoms of the um, of your molds and then there's a couple other I mean, it has a lot of benefits it has a much better uh, it produces the stem better it produces the bottom of the keycap better and it also um, has a great system for like a reservoir um, so you've seen the way that I do these sprues here and what you need is you need a reservoir of, of resin where if you don't put enough resin in there and you put it under pressure, what's gonna happen is air bubbles are gonna go inside these sprue holes and they're gonna get stuck inside your keycap. Um, and that happens all the time. You know, I end up having to throw away one or two every time I do a, um, do a casting because of the fact of the air bubbles. But, but the synth, the way the synth is designed, um, and actually, I'll show you one. I'm kinda of go off on a tangent. Let me, let me answer this, let me do this one first. So, man easy release. This is for when you're doing a two-part mold. Before you pour your second pour of uh, silicone, you wanna spray this on your mold 
to make sure that the silicone won't stick to it. Because even though this silicone is cured, if you are to pour sil new silicone on it, it will bond to it as if it were fresh silicone. It doesn't matter how old the silicone is, it is, it will bond and it will act as if it's fresh. And you will not be able to pull them apart. You will have to cut them apart and then your, your mold is worthless. So, um, so yeah, use Easy Release. Um, there's another thing that they, there's Easy Release 205 and there's one other one and I can't think of the name of it now. Um, it comes in a black and yellow can, spray can. Um, and okay, let's cover that real quick. So last stream, someone was asking me why I didn't use the spray can because it does come in a spray form. But I bought a $2 perfume mixing um, thing for like, this is a, a little bottle you can use for like spraying perfumes, hand, handmade perfumes or um, various other, well, this has got resin on it. Um, or no, it's got easy release on it. Um, so the reason why I do this is because the cans, they're hard to find in the store. You can buy them on Amazon, but if you buy them on Amazon, it has to be shipped in a different way because you can't ship contents under pressure. You can't ship um, spray paint, things like that. So you have to have to pay more for shipping. It takes longer and the cans come with less stuff in them. So I buy it in a big bottle like this pour that into here and then it lasts longer and then I have a little more control over it as well because um, I don't have to worry about running out and having to wait another two weeks for the next set of cans to come in. I can just pour more into this and we're good. It's not as convenient though. It doesn't make as nice of a spray. It's definitely not as as, as um, released as much as a spray because the spray is much more atomized. This is not as atomized. And so you'll get spots where there's lots of this on it because it kind of spits but it works, it works good enough. Okay, so what Tofu Mom was asking was about the synth, and what it's used for. So let's use that, let's talk about that. The synth, this little device here, it's made of aluminum and it has, I'm just gonna wipe off a few of these things because I'm realizing a lot of stuff has resin on it it off there. Okay. Now, where were we? Okay. So the synth, it is, um, it's made of aluminum with a, like, uh, a hard kind of like, um, what do you want to call it? Non-stick kind of chemical spray to the outside of it, almost like anodizing. So it's very hard. Um, and it's very light. And that non-stick helps for like silicone and resin to not stick to it as much. Now resin still sticks to it, but it doesn't stick to it as much. And so what you do with the with this particular tool is you can see it's shaped like a cherry keycap. Okay, it's shaped like the cherry brand cherry MX slider keycap, the bottom of it. So what you do is if you put like sculpting material on top of here it ensures that it will actually sit on top of the key, of, of the switch correctly so it'll still actuate the straight switch. Because the problem that people have sometimes their keycaps, what they don't realize they're doing when they're molding them or when they're sculpting them is they don't leave enough room. The other thing it does is it has this hole in the center that's the same shape as a cherry stem. And then when you, when you do the second part of the mold, you've got these sprue holes here. That's also awesome. When you do the second part of the mold, you stick this thing in here, just like that. And what that does is it forms the cherry stem perfectly. So you never have to worry about having a poorly formed stem. It's always gonna be perfect. And then it also, because of the fact that it has this little reservoir here, if you fill this with resin and then put this on here, sure, it's gonna leak out and get all over the top here, but when you pressurize it, all those little bubbles are gonna, are gonna collapse and they're gonna start sucking resin from somewhere. It needs to come from somewhere. So if you put this reservoir here and you fill it with resin, it's got a place for it to go. Same thing with this. It's got a place for that resin to go. So it's very useful, but the problem with these is, this is $100. This was $100 and, uh, I think $112 or something like that. So if you wanna make more than one key cap at a, cap at a time and you wanna use this um, synth, you gotta buy several of them. And at that point, it's expensive. 
Um, synth, so Binge uses them because he owns the company. So he, he, he owns the rights to them. He's the one who designed them. And so he can use as many as he wants, right? Because um, he sells them too. No, I mean, I'm not, I'm, and I'm not knocking Binge, right? I mean, obviously he, he knows what he's doing and he's, he's got the money for it. He obviously sells keycaps. Um, and I would recommend using this to kind of learn it, but it's not as, as universal maybe as a, as universal as a tool as you might think. Um, so one of the things that I did notice someone do though, and this is obviously, this is genius, but what they did is they took this and they molded it in silicone and then they made uh, a silicone version of it so they could use a silicone version of the synth, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and it seems to work really well. And the good thing is the resin doesn't stick to it. So it's much easier to operate. And then I think someone else made one out of resin. So they silicone cast it and then made a resin version of it. I don't know how well that works though. Um, and actually I'll show you one of my molds that I used the synth on. One of my old Umu ones. And you can see what I'm talking about. Got a big old pile of them. Okay, here's one. So this is the one that I made the synth with. So what I did was the first first half I did was I put a keycap on here. We'll find one. Okay. So I put a keycap on like so, just like this. And then I built a little box around it. And then I poured silicone over the top of this, right? In the box. So what ends up happening is, I'll we'll show you here real quick. So that's what it looked like when I pulled it out of the box, peeled off the outside, and then you got this, right? So now what I did was I took this whole part off here, took it out, just removed the keycap. Okay, so now I've got this going on. So it's a mold of this plus the keycap. So then I push the keycap back inside the mold, just like this, right? And so now the keycap is in there. And then I poured resin over top of that and got this. So basically it is like a recreation of this, right? And that's pretty much, I think, how most people use it and probably how Binge uses it too. Um, and so that ends up making a perfect impression of your keycap with sprue holes and everything. So it's pretty useful. It's just that you have to make them one at a time. Um, and it works great. You know, it's, it's a freaking awesome design. Um, but one of the things that you, you should notice, and this is what I was talking about, um, it doesn't have that reservoir for the, for the, for the resin to go in because it's sealed, right? So there's places where that resin is not is going to get stuck with air bubbles inside here, and so it doesn't form as well. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. So someone random from Mixer is asking me, what the hell am I watching? Um, well, this is, I'm talking about uh, casting resin keycaps the keys that go on your computer, making them from scratch with resin. Okay, so that's an explanation of the synth. Like I said, I think it's pretty useful. It's not um, super, uh, I find it not to be super useful. It will be useful when I start doing um, sculpting. For, uh, for sculpting, it's pretty, it's actually pretty useful for sculpting because you can put the clay on top of it just and it makes sure that you have your 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 um, base of the keycap formed correctly. So then you make that second part of that mold, like I showed you, and then you pull it out and do the second half of it, and then you have your 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 positive and your negative, right? So anyway, Vic on Mixer, uh, Vic the <laughs> Vic the Spick. Um, thanks for stopping by. I know it might be confusing to kind of come into the middle of a stream when I'm doing something and doing all this explaining and it doesn't really make any sense. But what we're doing is we're making keycaps. Well, we were. Um, we actually are just about done. Um, just waiting for the uh, resin to cure, which I'll pull out of the pot, or pull out of there tomorrow. So um, for those of you who haven't watched before, I'll show you what I produce. So 
So this is what the end product looks like. And actually, I might show you guys one more thing. Okay, so this is what the end product looks like. And my camera doesn't do it justice because it's just, it's very, the saturation on the colors isn't great. But this is like a jade green keycap. And this thing is not gonna focus on this, so I might have to fool it. I'm gonna have to fool it. Okay. So it's like this jade green color. It needs to be sanded. Same with this one here. It's jade green. And then I make some other ones. Uh, some of the other ones are kind of boring. They're single colors, but I got this blue one here. And these ones really glow nice and bright. I'm gonna try something else, because that, that paper towel makes the camera freak out. Use something with black, it'll make it easier. Okay, maybe now it won't freak out so much. So there you go. It's like a weird kind of almost translucent blue. One of my favorite ones, actually. And then you got this one, same thing. Made from two different molds though. Uh, Wolves asking, is that jade blue and green? Uh, no, no, it's actually, here I'll show you. It's actually dark green and light green, like a lime green. Again, this isn't doing it any justice. Okay, let's take a look at some other ones. This is the one that I made uh, the other day on stream. This is like a neon blue, and it didn't turn out super neon. It looks more like toothpaste, like a toothpaste blue, which is kind of funny, um, but it, it's pretty bright. And then I have my sky keycaps. They're like white and blue. They have kind of a cloudy sky look to them. These ones turned out really neat. I got one that has like some kind of like a little bit of glitter in it, which might not show up on the camera. Yeah, it's not gonna show up, but it's got kind of like a glittery look to it. It's very hard to get it to focus on it because it's very bright white. Same thing with this one. It's not gonna wanna focus on it. Um, and then I have my neon pink keycaps, which are actually in a box um, in my other office, so I can't really show them on stream. But yeah, that's what I'm making. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one more thing, um, and then I'm gonna call it a night. Because it's already 9.30. Okay, so sometimes my keycaps, they come out a little bit um, rough looking. And so what I do is, like this one is like a super polished finish. It's very, very polished, very shiny, great keycap. But then a different mold, and you can see this one's not as, this one's not as shiny. It might not show up on camera, but it's just not as shiny. It's, very, it's, it's a little more dull. Um, and that is because it was a different keycap, a different plastic, which wasn't polished before I cast it. So what I do is I took, this is a polishing compound, Megiar's polishing compound. And so what you can do is you take a little bit of this, and get a glove on. It's not toxic to the skin, so you don't have to worry about really touching it, but I'm gonna still put a glove on. And you're gonna take a little bit, you don't need much. Just need to take a little bit of this polishing compound. 
which of course immediately squirts all over my hand. Classic. Here I am trying to be clean. Gets all over the place. But okay, so what you do, take a little bit and just put it on like, uh, I'm just gonna use my finger, but I'll put some on my finger here. And you don't need much, just a tiny bit. There we go. And then you just rub the keycap with it. And you don't need to put a ton of pressure on there, but you wanna put a little bit, just a light pressure. All right, I'm gonna get this so you can see what I'm doing here. And it takes a few minutes. You know, it's gonna take you about like, I don't know, five minutes or so. But you just kind of rub that there, rub it around the sides. Just be, you know, a little gent gentle pressure. And you're gonna do this for, a, I would say about, I mean, you, if you want it to be perfect, it'd be five minutes per side, probably. Um, and it will make it very, very shiny polish. And if your keycaps have like little scratches and stuff on them, just like tiny little scratches on them, it's really good to, to work out those tiny scratches. Now for larger scratches, it's not gonna help. Not gonna help at all. But it did help me polish up a few of the keycaps that had some uh, trouble spots on them, I would say. I'll call them trouble spots. And it helped quite a bit. And to clean it, you just want to use you just want to use clean water. Don't use alcohol. That will ruin it. I can tell you from experience, do not use alcohol on resin. It will dissolve the resin a little bit and will reduce the shininess of your keycap. And we haven't been polishing it enough to really show any difference in it. Um but it will, it does look shinier. I can guarantee it. It will look shinier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this off a little bit. And then I'll wipe it off with some, or wash off a little bit of water. And unfortunately the camera is not gonna pick up that detail. So you're not gonna see it, but you can trust me when I say it does look better. It does look shinier. Yeah, unfortunately you can't really see it. But it has a cleaner, more shiny, more polished look to it now. So it's a good way to just like get, if you have a dull keycap or whatever that you wanna polish, you can polish it. Um, I don't know how work well it works with PBT, but I can say that it does work uh, with uh, ABS plastic um, and it does work with resin so it's just a good way to polish up something um, and if I were to do five minutes per side of rubbing it like that it would turn out like very very shiny very polished um, I'm just not gonna do that on the stream because it would take forever and it's something that you know it really depends on how much you really want your your caps to look like bright and shiny because um, it would take forever and if you had like an automatic tool, like a hand sander or something like that, um, and you had like a, a sander with a sponge attachment, just a regular old sponge polishing attachment, you could use this and just use a hand sander and that would go much faster. Um, but I just don't have a hand sander. Well, I do, I do have a hand sander, but it doesn't have a sponge attachment. Um, so it would just, I have to do it by hand. But um, I think that's gonna be it for tonight. I don't really have anything else to cover um, to go over on stream, so. I think we're gonna call it a night. And then I'm gonna to try to stream again later this week. Uh, I'm not really sure when, probably, probably like Thursday. I think maybe Thursday would be a good day. Friday would be good, but I've got things I'm doing Friday night, um, like at late at night. So it might be, it might be maybe I'll do it Friday. Um, but let me go ahead and put my Twitter my Twitter page in there so you guys can follow me on Twitter so you can see when I'm about to do something and I can show you pictures of the work I'm doing. Those of you who follow me on uh, my Discord channel, or I should say 
Ski with Pete's Discord channel. I don't own it. I will post on my uh, pictures on there too. So let me get my Twitter thing. Um, I gotta find it. Probably gonna butcher this because YouTube really messes it up. YouTube really donks it up. But that might work. Yep. YouTube, as usual, donking it up. But I'll go ahead and type in there. Maybe this will work. Ugh, I'm like really screwing up here. So that should work. Yes, okay. So uh, follow me on those on uh, Twitter and you can see when I post the uh, pictures. Which I should be doing here soon. Uh, Tefram is saying those are the Royals. Uh, no, those are not the Royals. I don't have any Royals yet. Uh, those are the box navies. Yeah, those are the box navy switches. So those are the clicky, those are the clicky switches. Okay. Well, thanks again, everybody, for showing up on stream. I really appreciate you guys showing up and uh, hanging out with me and, and listening to me babble and, and talk about things. Um, so uh, again, you know, keep an eye out on the on the stream. Uh, keep an eye on my my Twitter, and you'll see when I'm going live. Um, subscribe if you're on YouTube. You can follow me on uh, Twitch as well. Mixer, I think, has a following thing. I'm not sure how that works, but um, but yeah, follow me on there and keep an eye out for things. I will be doing another giveaway, which was really popular. I'll be doing another giveaway sometime in the next month. I don't want to do too many of them at once, um, but I will be doing another one, um, and I will announce what's actually going to be in that giveaway very soon. I'm kind of working on a few things in the background right now. So I can't quite get to it as soon as I would like to, but I will. Um, so again, thanks for stopping by. I hope you guys have a great evening, and I will hopefully talk to you soon. Good night.